to see Fairy Tale in the White Chamber. Um, we have to go first to Vladimir Prop, and Allison spoke about him this morning, but uh, she touched on him anyway. He wrote his morphology of the fairy tale, and he gave it 31 uh, points or tropes that a fairy tale will follow. You don't have to follow all 31, but they are, you can pick them out if you read a fairy tale story. Well, this image, as I'm pretty sure, is not within the Nanocon. It's of the image of the world without the back. So, the questions? Who is there? Where did they come from? Have they come from here or that? Why are they hated? And why are they popular? So, what are our worlds? The church has um, a very strong influence on what people believe about ghosts. And at the time when Shakespeare was around, Shakespeare um, was particularly interested in ghosts. And that is viewed at the time as probably the building on the parsonage didn't have this new bit on the side, but it's still the same building. But the reason for it was the graveyard, which is just in front of the parsonage at the top of the hill. And above 
the rest of how. And if you go to the massively high death rate, the graveyard itself is massively overpopulated. And as I said there, there's believed to be at least 40,000 bodies buried in the graveyard. I actually couldn't find out how big the graveyard is exactly, but I have been there and I would say it's no bigger than maybe half the size of the football pitch. It sounds a lot, but it's not considering the amount of bodies. Um, and obviously, because I have to have somewhere to keep all the dead, um, many of the graves are well over 10 coffins deep. What did he do? He travelled down to London. When he was on the border, he stopped, he had a look around, thought the people were barbaric, and thought, I'm going to sort these out when I get down to London. Gets to London, he sits himself on the throne, and never ever goes back to Scotland. What he does do is he sends armies up to the border and pacifies the border. In other words, hands all the chieftains and the lairds and drives the people out, sends some of them to Ireland, some of them to Holland, some of them to Virginia in America. And he makes lots of land which he puts his people in, English people. They become landowners and they have sheep and build nice houses and things. And the Scots are driven out, so the border is driven out. So that's Jane, nice chap. This woman at sea side. Is it in fact him that's the cold person? Is he withdrawing emotion and warmth and uh, sort of human connection with something else? Is he revisiting this? Um, I think there's lots of reasons for thinking that actually Lockwood is perhaps the person with the problem in this. And this is really just to sort of draw attention to the very, very complex way that this novel is narrated.